Hello everyone, this is Adrian Bell and today we will talk about a case that happened in France. The victim was an 8-year-old little girl that disappeared under mysterious circumstances and this crime uncovered a series of other unthinkable crimes in the region of the French Alps. Elise de Araújo was born on November 5, 2008. She was a sweet, beautiful and innocent little girl from France with a Portuguese descent. She lived in France near the Alps with her family and she loved playing with her friends. She also seemed to love animals and took many pictures with them. She had a very close relationship with her elder sister and they spent a lot of time together. The region close to the French Alps, where she lived, surrounded by mountains and woodlands, was a place where she was supposed to grow up safe and happy with her family and friends. But that was about to end in a gruesome way. On August 26, 2017, Mylise attended her mother's cousin's wedding at Pont de Beauvoisin, and the Alps. After the wedding, they had an after-wedding party that lasted many hours. Mylise was happy and having fun at the event, which was a special moment for her family. She was last seen about 2.45 a.m. on August 27th and then vanished. Her family asked for the DJ at the party to ask the people attending the party to look for Mylise, but after an hour looking for her, with no success, they called the police. The investigation in the area had the help of 155 police officers and many volunteers. The bloodhounds were able to trace her scent to the parking lot and then it disappeared, as if she had been thrown into a car or even entered it voluntarily. The police interviewed over 200 people that were in attendance at the party, but the police directed their investigation towards a 34-year-old former soldier specialized in dog training named Nortel Lulande. After they found through the CCTV footage that he had left the party at about 3 a.m. with a small frail figure wearing a white dress. Mylise was wearing a white dress. That figure was her. About 40 minutes later, he came back to the party alone and stayed there for a while. The police then found more CCTV footage of Nordel using a car wash service, washing his car profusely. For over two hours, the day after Mylisa's disappearance, despite the thorough cleaning, the police were able to retrieve some of her DNA from the steering wheel of his car. With this evidence, the police questioned him, but he denied everything, saying only that she came around his car asking to play with his dogs, but that was it. Without more evidence, the police kept him as a person of interest, but couldn't charge him as they had only circumstantial evidence of the crime. When the police took a closer look at him, they started suspecting that Nordel was actually a serial killer. The investigation of the disappearance of Mylis uncovered some very disturbing things about the police's main suspect. One of the things that they uncovered was that in April 2017, a 23-year-old soldier named Arthur Noyer was hitchhiking in Chambéry in the Savoie area after leaving a nightclub when he disappeared. The remains of his skull were discovered on a hiking trail in September of that same year, in Couet, a small town in Savoie, in a mountainous area about 20 kilometers from Chambéry. After being pressured by the police with the evidence they had, Nordel confessed that he gave a ride to Arthur Noyer when he left the nightclub, but he kept denying the crime for months, saying that Arthur left his car alive and he provided many possible theories and versions of what happened to support his defense. 
There were over 15 unsolved crimes that happened under similar circumstances in the region, and the police were strongly suspicious that Nordel was directly involved, including the massacre of a British Iraqi family, Al Hill, living in the region, in which only their two small children survived. Later on, in December 2017, Nordel was indicted for the murder of Artur Noyer, and in March 2018, he ended up confessing to the murder, saying that he and Arthur actually had a fight and Arthur fell down a steep decline about 20 kilometers outside of the city. After six months of intense investigation and pressure brought to bear by the police with the evidence they had against him, Nordel Lulande ended up confessing to the crime, saying that Mylise had gone into his car by herself because she wanted to see his dogs. On the way to see his dogs, Mylise panicked and asked him to take her back to the party. To calm her down, he slapped her in the face. So the police and everyone else that heard his story guessed that his slap on Mylise's face must have been pretty brutal, as he said that after that, Mylise lost consciousness. Then he proceeded with his confession, saying that he thought she fainted, and then after checking her pulse, he found out she was dead. So, let me get this straight. Nordel basically told the police that he slapped Melise in the face, and for this reason, she died. Nordel also told the police that after noticing that Melise had died, he took her body to a cabin located on his parents' property. Then, he changed his shorts because they were stained with blood. Then he returned to the wedding and stayed there for a while to not bring attention to the fact he had left. After leaving the party, Nordel went back to the cabin, took Mylise's body to his car and disposed of her remains in the Chartreuse Massif area. This is all he was willing to say. Mylise's bones alongside remains of clothing and a shoe in very poor condition, were discovered on February 14, 2018, about six months after her disappearance, after Nordel had indicated the place to the police. Many people in France were questioning his story and wondering if he made that up in order to get a lighter charge for battery and assault, instead of something much worse like child rape and murder. It was also reported that Nordel used that same line of defense in the murder of Arthur Noyer, in which he was being accused of being the killer as well. When forensics compared the evidence found on Mylise's remains and Nordel's confession, something was really odd, as the autopsy revealed several fractures to Mylise's skull, and two fractures to her jaw to the point at which it was broken. According to forensics, these fractures occurred before her death, but none of them were fatal. These facts made the police question the confession of Nordel, who maintained from the start that Mylise died accidentally after he allegedly slapped her in the face. Also, his cell phone had been turned off when Mylise entered his car, which made the police wonder if he actually premeditated the crime. Nordel was detained at a psychiatric unit in a prison, as his defense alleged he had mental illness and drug abuse issues, which is all being investigated. The police also found a very disturbing video on his cell phone that shows a sexual assault of a six-year-old little girl, his cousin. The assault took place at Nordel's home, where the little girl and her parents were staying with him during the summer of 2017 in Domissan, a week before the kidnapping of Mylise. The investigator said that the video shows the aggressor's arm and they believe it was Nordel's arm. The parents of the victim were traumatized after the police showed them the video. They filed a report soon after viewing it. Later on, the investigators found a second video of Nordel sexually abusing a different child a four-year-old girl that was actually his godchild. According to the investigators, the second video was extremely explicit and clear enough 
to confirm Nordel as a child predator. Finally, a third investigation was opened against him for sexually assaulting and threatening another girl that was 14 years old at the time. She's also his cousin. This assault allegedly took place in March 2017. Nordelio Lande will be tried in May 2021 for the murder of the 23-year-old soldier Arthur Noye. In September 2019, the prosecutor's office had taken additional action after being informed by the prison administration of confidences gathered by a fellow detainee of Nordel, to whom the latter allegedly said he had raped my lease. The court rejected two appeals from the defendant, opening the possibility of prosecuting him for the rape of Maylis de Araújo. He will officially face a total of five different trials for the two murders and the three child sexual abuse cases. A date for his trial for Maylis's case has not been given yet, as the investigation is still ongoing and in its final phase. Over 500 people attended Maylis's funeral. Among them were the parents of Artunoye. Nordel apologized for having killed Maylis and said that it was an accident, to which Maylis's mother responded saying that she hoped that Maylis's ghost would haunt him every night in jail until he dies and rots in hell. I hope Maylis, Artu, and the other victims of Nordel get the justice they deserve. This case is extremely disturbing and shows us how danger could be closer than we think. It took Melissa's innocence and life for Nordel's family members to discover the horrific abuse he was committing against his own cousins and godchild. Also, the police found out that he wasn't only the main suspect for the kidnapping and killing of Artur Noye, but also many other people in that very same region. This man is suspected of being a serial killer and confirmed child predator, and he spent many years free among other people that probably had no idea of the monster he is. Nordel was involved in all kinds of crimes against innocent people of all ages, but something that became clear to the police and all of us is that he is a child predator. Child predators are not necessarily like we may think a child predator would look like. As we could see in this case, they could be anyone, anywhere, surrounded by friends, family, and having what we would consider a completely normal life. So be aware. Nordel was raping children among his family members. They were close to him. Their parents trusted him. This is a wake-up call for everybody. The only reason these crimes were uncovered is because he killed my lease, and the police found videos of the assaults during the investigation. Do you know why? Because pedophiles will make sure their victims won't tell anyone, by fear or confusion or embarrassment. Please educate your kids about the boundaries they must expect from others, especially adults. Make sure they know you will never blame them and that they can trust you and will tell you anything. If you suspect a child is suffering abuse and you don't know what to do or don't want to get involved, at least report it anonymously to the police, the authorities or child services. Call someone and try. Please try. You may save a child's entire future by doing this. Please review the links below for more information regarding children's safety. If you like this video, please leave your thumbs up and subscribe for more content. Thanks for watching.